Today on Dirty Linen, we are on site at the Australian Open, the annual tennis tournament and hospitality extravaganza in Melbourne. I'm a big fan of the AO. I love to go at least one day every year just to experience all the different offerings which change each year. That's one of the most impressive things about it. There is, are all kinds of food and drink experiences from the kinds of kiosks that you'd find at the grand final to really fancy restaurants that you need to book ahead for and that come with a Rod Laver arena ticket. So dinner and centre court, pretty good. I'm standing right now outside the Ligon Street Italian precinct, which I think is so lovely that the Australian Open has recreated one of Melbourne's iconic eating strips with its famous Italian focus uh, at the AO. There is, uh, there's sweets and savouries from Brunetti, there's pizza from Doc, and there's King and Godfrey deli items. It's just really fun. And I bet lots of people who come to Melbourne for the Australian Open see that Ligon Street Italian precinct and head off to the street itself to experience more of what it has to offer. It is fun and it's really fun to be here. So let's wander around and see who else we can find. There's a new precinct just by the outer courts, the Western courts, that has two really fun and fabulous Melbourne food operations that have popped up here. One is Little Havana from Chef Charlie Carrington, known to many as the chef of Hatted Atlas Restaurant. Uh, ch let's go and have a chat to Charlie and see what it means to bring a Little Havana to the Australian Open. All right, so we're on Western Courts. Um, we've got Little Havana, our stall. So we've been here since the um, opening week, which was the qualifiers. So um, today's day 10, of course. Um, yeah, it's just been amazing to bring our sort of Cuban sandwiches, been really popular. Um, probably a little couple of extra items for the tennis as well. We did like a ham and cheese one for the kids, which has been awesome. All the ball boys keep coming back for them, so that says something. And then the um, the Cuban chicken plate as well, something we don't usually do, but um, we wanted to have something really sort of smart for the night offering, and that's been selling super, super well. Probably the hardest thing on the menu <laughs> to get right, so it's been intense, but um, yeah, it's good, really, really good. So the joys of working at the AO are definitely just being here I think like you know it's a real honor to be here I've done it a few times now and I think that um you know it's such a world-class event I'm a massive tennis fan as well not that I've seen any of it but I've um yeah it's just a you know being able to be here it's also a good challenge as well like it pushes you as a chef like I think that you know you in a restaurant you might do 60 people and you know you're running around like crazy where here you might do 15 1600 orders a day so yeah just the volume thing um there's a lot of challenges in that um, the team as well, like, yeah, I took a lot of the team from Atlas Weekly, our boxers, so I took them, so I haven't, not all of them had much experience, so training everyone up, and yeah, they've just been amazing, and, you know, particularly like a very young team as well, we've got like 17-year-olds, which we've never had before. <laughs> what I think is so good about the AO is it's like, not just tennis, so like, I, like when I say like, I love the tennis, I, I'd be happy to watch it all day, but they have like, all the activations, like, Kids Day, for example, was just madness. I had to go home for that one. <laughs> it's just too many kids everywhere screaming. I was like, all right, I'll uh, sit this one out. But um, besides that, like, yeah, it's just, it's fun. Like, they've got the music going. Um, Obviously, yeah, all the show courts have been open the last two weeks. So it's just been, like, a great buzz around here. Um, and then they've got, like, yeah, First Nations Day, Pride Day. So they, you know, take it to a sort of another level. It's not just tennis. And I think that attracts a more, like, varied and diverse crowd. So um, Salama Tea on um, GSO, they have Grand Slam Oval. They have this amazing pomegranate um, sort of, it's like a pomegranate granita. Um, one of the team from tennis brought me one yesterday and I was just sweating over the grill to, to fix me and um, it was unbelievable. So I'll be going back for that. Um, yeah, I know the guys at Easy's have done really well and also um, the guys at Doc, you know, I think doing their pizzas, I know like, you know, making thousands of pizzas a day, like it's pretty pretty bloody hard and they've done a that looks amazing the product um so if someone who hasn't had little havana i'd recommend probably the original cuban is definitely the go um the chicken sandwich has just been like gangbusters here which i definitely underestimated it was actually a last minute menu change i was going to do the beef one and i thought actually i'll do the chicken instead um because it's like we although we toast the bread there the mix is cold so it's a bit easier for us whether the beef one would have been two grilled items but um, it's just been crazy. Like I think, you know, guests during the day, they just want chicken. <laughs> so far we've done um, one and a half tons of chips and we're halfway through, so that's a, that's a good start. Um, we've done 
have hams. We've done 800 kilos of our ham, which goes in our Cuban. We've done 1,200 kilos of the pork collar. And um, so far of the chicken, so this is the chicken plate and the other chicken combined, we've done one ton. So, yeah, and we're only halfway there. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like, you know, like during the, during the busiest days, like, yeah, we'd be easily up to 1500, 1600 sandwiches alone. And then, you know, add on the fries, add on a million Pepsi maxes and then you're halfway there. Right next door to the little Havana setup is Frankie Cox from Green On. Green On is a salad bar in Richmond. It's pretty busy there, uh, serves a lot of the surrounding offices in a busy commercial park. But let's find out from Frankie what it's like to bring Green On, her beautiful salad bar with a very sustainable focus, to the extremely busy Australian Open. We have got our salad bar green on, all about eating for impact and embracing local salads. So it's been a massive few months of sourcing all the produce from local producers and doing all the logistics around that. It's like hundreds of kilos of tomatoes and peaches and um, mixed leaves and all the grains and everything like that. So it's been, yeah, a, um, a pretty long time just organizing with everyone, making sure that they have enough produce and enough stock and everything like that. Uh, but yeah, what we really wanted to be able to achieve is to bring something a bit healthy and fresh and nourishing to the people at the Australian Open because more often than not, it's more like fried food um, and you, you know, probably high GI food and people are here all day, so they need to eat something sustaining. And we just, you know, really always like to um, reignite conversations around food and the power of food. So being here with such a big audience, um, it seemed like a really great opportunity to be able to do that. So the AO Bowl, is that that's our special for the event. We don't have that on at the shop. Um, and I really wanted to be able to put something on the menu that was, you know, you know, in the peak of summer. So we have been speaking to Farm Razor, um, a, a small urban farm in Belfield, which is just next to Ivanhoe, um, for four months, um, discussing like, when to plant the seeds to grow all the lettuce. Um, so yeah, they're only 12 Ks away from Rod Laver. So we really wanted to work them into our menu. And um, we've been taking as many tomatoes as we can. They, their tomatoes were pretty late. So we've just started taking them. They're incredible. Like, you know, we've always wanted to just keep things really simple. And so getting really good quality ingredients, we don't have to do anything to them. All we have to do is half them and that's it. Like these ones don't even need salt. Like they're so flavorful. I'll bring you some after. Yeah. Um, and and then yeah, Natura have been sourcing the peaches um, for us. They're like they're the best peaches I've ever tasted. They're from Shepparton, um, and also have been sourcing tomatoes from all over the place, um, especially from Wandilock in the Yarra Valley. Um, and yeah, so you know we just get to have that conversation with people about how fresh it is. A lot of the time we don't have the have the time to have the conversation because the line is snaking. Um, some of the lines have been snaking for like four hours at a time. Um, so it's it's a little bit churn and burn, but we've got all our systems in place that we are really quick with handing over the food so that we do can have a little bit of time to talk to them and, you know, want to um, know how their day's been and to tell them a little bit about our brand as well. It feels like I'm straight back in the kitchens of New York. Like you, you are on adrenaline. We're kind of like I've been doing maybe 15, 16 hour days now for like the last nine days straight. So I get up in the morning at about 5.30 and then go to the shop because um, we have to bring a lot of deliveries in ourselves. The um, delivery window um, closes at 7.30. So then bring that over here and my, my dad comes with me every morning. So he helps me unpack it all. Um, and then I go back to the shop and I prep all the salad dressings because it's really important for us to make all of our own dressings. And also again, with local produce, the miso ginger has the most amazing miso made in Dalesford from cow, 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 cow. Um, and so yeah, I do that. And then the girls um, start arriving here and start assembling the salads for the day. So we are pretty much at the moment assembling 500 of each salad each day and um, so it's just, and like it's pretty tight back there um so it's just like yeah a bit of a, a puzzle and a game of tetris to get us set up and ready for it but once the people start coming in like you just you you know the adrenaline kicks in and the energy is just amazing like we were prepared for sunday knowing that it was the first time that they were do, do, doing the first day on a sunday that there would be a lot of people but having gone from week zero where people were just kind of trickling in to by 
I think it was 11 a.m. There were already 25,000 people here. And, but like, everyone's been amazing as well. Everyone's so happy to be here. When the weather's amazing, the energy's incredible. And then just like what's taken me by surprise is the nights. Like, I knew people would come after work, but we get slammed from 6 p.m. till 10 p.m. But like, also because games are finishing at different times, I just thought, you know, oh, dinner service will probably be finished at about 8 because people will go into the games, but people are always coming out of the game. So Ian from the Lincoln, he jumped in last night because we got so slammed the night before. So he was amazing. Um, but, yeah, it like we couldn't have more hands on deck just to keep churning up the food. We, you know, you want to try to keep all your ticket times under five minutes sometimes when the fryer gets super backed up we've pushed out to 20 but luckily 20 has been our longest wait at the moment so that's pretty good considering the numbers that we're doing we're walking right across the other side of this whole precinct to john kane arena which is one of the stadium courts and there's an experience upstairs called fusion feast which i would love to show you one of the other premium experiences is fusion feast this is upstairs at john kane arena and i love this concept uh, it's basically a buffet with a number of different chefs and restaurants putting up some food from uh, yeah around Asia. So we've got Saray, Ross Magnet, Filipino food. One of the highlights is a seared kangaroo with roasted bone marrow. Uh, Jesse Singh from daughter in law, Indian dishes, including lamb, Rogan Josh. Um, there's Diana Chan doing Malaysian food. I love Diana's spin on flavor. Uh, I would be definitely picking up some chicken and beef satay served with onions and cucumber here, as well as the fried tempeh with ikan bilis. Uh, Scott Lord from Moon House is doing Cantonese food. How good does the Hainanese chicken with crispy chicken skin and fermented chili sound? And uh, Hariruya Pantry in Carlton, which is such a cute spot, is doing some ice cream so japanese gelato with one of the flavors being cream cheese yuzu and blueberry so uh, a ticket to this food also includes an arena ticket and unlimited drinks so it's a pretty good package another stellar moment from the ao we're going to change things up now and we're going to visit a couple of really premium experiences people or brands that pop up at the australian open year upon year starting with one of Australia's most famous wine brands. One thing that I love, at least looking at at the AO, if not having the privilege of sitting down to eat and drink, is the super premium experiences. And the Penfolds room where I am now is certainly like that. It's incredible to think that this is a temporary structure. It looks like a glorious restaurant with an under the sea theme. We've got red velvet banquettes, we've got drapes and seaweed hanging from the high ceilings. It's really quite a spectacular setting. So people who have tickets to this experience will be eating shaved tuna with bonito cream, followed by seared wagyu, and then a main course of roasted chicken with celeriac and black truffle. Dessert is a white chocolate parfait. Of course, it's all paired with Penfolds wines. It's uh, very swank in here. Right next door to Penfolds is a restaurant that many people will know from its Melbourne, Sydney and Perth iterations, Rockpool Bar and Grill. Let's have a chat to Chef Corey Costello. Well, we are in the in the Rockpool Bar and Grill pop-up restaurant at the AO for I think it's I, I, we, we still don't know whether it's seventh or eighth year. We get confused. <laughs> but it's been a while. The, the the AO team have been so good with us because um, you know we walk in usually and kick and scream and demand everything and um they're pretty good with us i think they're, they're like no you guys are good um and yeah they know that we deliver so we can do pretty big numbers in a very short amount of time um because we've had some practice at it now so um they they often quite you know they quite often get other restaurants to come down and see what we do and how we do it and so that gives them a, a bit of a an idea of how quickly you need to go because it's yeah you're not here for the food you're really here to see the tennis. Um, so yeah, you need to be able to get three courses out in two hours, which sounds easy, but it's not really when it's 300 people. That's one of the stipulations of, of doing it is that we have to use all of our suppliers. I mean, the Holy Goat as well. Um, so, you know, I speak to Paula about four months ago and hey, we're gonna do it again. I'm gonna need 60 wheels of La Luna. And she's like, oh my God, I'll ever do that. But yeah, she's fantastic. and. Yeah, I love serving here too because it's, you know, an hour and 10 minutes out of Melbourne. It's probably the, you know, I still think it's Australia's best cheese. Um, 
and yeah, to have something so local serve to you know such an international crowd. Um, yeah, it does Melbourne proud. I was really lucky to be invited to the AO by Emirates, which has put on an invitation-only marquee. Uh, this is a really different experience, one where you get a little wristband, you can pop in and out throughout the day for nibbles and eats and drinks and some pretty fun pretend you're on an airplane yeah, okay. experiences. There are airplane windows, first class seating. You can even get a Polaroid taken in a first class booth. It's really plush. You know, the carpet is thick and rich. Uh, there are hosties in beautiful uniforms to welcome you. Of course, there are screens where you can watch the tennis um, because, yeah, that's what we're all here to do, really. But in the meantime, how about a, an Aperol cocktail and some delicious food? Sprawling between Rod Laver Arena and Margaret Court and the John Kane uh, Stadium is a big grassy area that has big screens where people can watch the games that they don't have tickets to. There's often music or other entertainment there and there are a number of food outlets. I couldn't help but feel the need to catch up with Hamed Aliari from Salamati Restaurant in Sunshine. Uh, in Sunshine. Uh, Hamed and I collaborated on his beautiful book, Salamati, and I am so excited to see this humble but extremely talented chef get the chance to showcase his Persian cuisine to this massive audience at the Australian Open. How's it going, Hamed? Uh, we love it. It's a good teamwork. The our food is becoming very well, becoming the top 10 best food in AO. Yesterday, they put them in the newsletter. And our, as we fell off, the rap become uh, number six in top ten. So it's actually a cha good challenge. We we happy, but same time we are <laughs> stressing as well. There is a like restaurant now called Antis West of February because becoming like a prep area. We making the uh, like we make a proper mixture other stuff there, and then we deliver it every morning uh, here. The our team, as you can see, like over 15 people working here. And uh, like, it's good experience. It's my first year, <laughs> exciting. But I'm so happy I'm between this area, you know, presenting my culture. I love that yesterday people get our falafel. They go to eat, sit, and sit and eat it. Come back, that was very like, I love that because they come back, they put their best to tell me they had the best falafel in the world. And I love that, you know, that's the best. Well, I have eaten my fill, definitely. And I've had a couple of drinks. I think there's one thing left to do when you're at the Australian Open, and that is to sit down and watch some tennis. Yeah! This is Dirty Linen and I'm Danny Vallant. We air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about, hearing from different people with unique perspectives. We want to hear from you as well. If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you.